So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Second and ten. It's Wilson again. Caught here by Conley. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. From the gun on third down, Wilson. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. And he gets it away, and it's a laser headed for the sidelines. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. A minute 59 to go in the first half. Back to Heinz Field after this. taken down right at about the 15-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Second down throw for Cousins. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a third and nine and six defensive backs out there in the dime. Patrolling the passing lanes. the gun. Here's Cousins being chased out left and he'll slide down to avoid the contact. Ten yards there on a Bengal first. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. A big run there. 29 yards at a first. That looked like a two-deep coverage, which we call cover two. And what that really means is you have corners, what we call rolled up in about a five-yard area on the outside receivers. Then your safeties are back closer to the hash marks near the middle of the field, somewhere around 10 to 12 yards back. So if you can break through the first level, you've got a chance to run before you encounter any type of resistance from the safeties. We saw the example of it right there. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Bell so light on his feet. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. And now a first down following that long game. Tight, tight. Tight, tight. 
Now Rodgers. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. And a nice job defensively to keep him out of the end zone. He's trying to get a second touchdown already in the first half. They had that one earlier. was bidding for a second. And prior to this third and two play, we're going to get a timeout call as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. This offense so far on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and goal. They come out here in the eye. Here's Bell. And he is in. Touchdown, Bengals. Le'Veon Bell as the first half is winding down. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here in the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tarry it into the second half. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. They run it here. Where? And they're able to get this one across the 35. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. Final play of the half, it's Wilson. He's going to go deep for Conley. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. And before we can even hear from Larry, we're back and ready to go in week five. Meanwhile, the second quarter score from Carolina. The gap's getting wider there. The Saints have scored again. We'll keep you updated on that one as it progresses. This one fielded at the five. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, is that you can take the spirit away from another team. That their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M, and all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me his balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game as we just saw there. Second down, Cousins. Dancing to his left. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. And the Bengals on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and 15. Now whistles at a flag. And I believe a Bengal got going a little early there. Now the Bengals on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and a mile. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. This is Bell on the dump off. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. 
Five yards on the pickup, and it'll be fourth down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Now it's Tate. They'll call that a 61-yard punt. He got all of that one. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield. He's got a man complete. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. That goes for a gain of 31. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Dumps that off to Ware. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play, and it'll be a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Todd Davis. 20. Pushing him away. Popped it right out there. Nice return, but you know he's just beating himself up inside for not getting all the way in. No doubt about it, because he had visions of end zone in his mind. Going to be the total hero. But we did see there the emphasis on it's not just good enough to pick it off anymore. Bring it back, get the yardage, and really help out your offense. They come out here in the eye. It's Cousins on the sneak. And he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. Kirk Cousins, his second touchdown of the game and his ninth on the year. And the Bengals use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. together here from the D-line. Now they'll try to sweep with Bell. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. The offense on third down, two for five to this point. They're looking at a third and goal here. They'll run, it's Rodgers. And he is in. Touchdown, Bengals. Jaquiz Rodgers with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Bengals add on to their lead. They'll try and run it in with Bell. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. Four bath out to kick this one away. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Three. 
Now a play fake here on first down. And Wilson's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off inside the 10. And a good return here as he takes it up past the 30-yard line. Partner's bad enough when you just can't hold on to the football. But when your quarterback's throwing it to the other team, that's three interceptions now, four turnovers for the game. You really have no chance to win the football game. to Bell and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line that'll go as a loss of five and it'll make this a second and long inside four minutes to go third quarter Well, now they'll try the end around, shedding the tackle. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing there, no gain, and now they're looking at a third and 15. And the Bengals on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and 15. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Goes underneath for Bell. Now Bell hit. He lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. What's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover it for his squad. Chalk that up as their first sack in this game, and they tallied four a week ago. And probably not as much exultation in that sack as what took us so long. Because when you get four the previous week, you're counting on continuing that momentum. They didn't get that done in the first half of the game. Let's see now if they start to bring even more exotic pressure towards the quarterback. Cousins now on second down. Caught on the right side by Adams. And Owen caught it up. And it looks like Steeler football. It is. We have seen this before. And we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Elsewhere, they have gone to the second half in Carolina. The gap's getting wider there. The Saints have scored again. Remember to keep an eye on the ticker, of course, at the bottom of your screen for updates on that game and others around the NFL. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. The completion good for three, and it's second down. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him. And, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him. You know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man -to, -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, giving different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. On first and 10, it's Wilson. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense... Be aware, a ball may come your way. Wilson. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Give him nine there on the first down completion. 
Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. Buying time to... And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Dan Williams in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. And the Steelers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This time it's third and three. Here's Wilson. And the third down pass falls incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. And the now 40-year-old veteran able to put this one through. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time, and he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. you got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level, and he's able to get back on track. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when oh, they only gave up the field yeah. goal and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive? A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown, but they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think the coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Second down, offense behind the sticks here. Second and 13. Off the play fake, Cousins. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. It'll be a gain of six, and that's going to bring up a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. And the Bengals on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and seven. They go play action. Cousins. Four down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Cliff Averill with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. Back now in Pittsburgh. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. On the return, it's Tate. And he is knocked down and then landed on pretty awkwardly. A great return there of 22 yards. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. They go play action here on first down. Now he's flushed out right. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. A wise move there. Looked like nobody open. Now second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. 
We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. On third down, Wilson. Looking deep downfield. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. And the back goes into motion. And no press coverage here. They are backing off in the secondary. Wilson. Flushed out right. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Jason McCourty. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. Just a little bit of a rough stretch. Six interceptions now in these last two weeks combined. I know the easy thing is to go back to mechanics, footwork, things of that nature. I'm also wondering, is he getting fooled by what he's seeing on defense? Has the scouting report changed? Are they showing him things different than what he expected? For the second week in a row, he's throwing it to the guys in the wrong color shirts. Yeah, he better figure, whatever the reason is, he better figure it out. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. To throw, Cousins. And his throw here is incomplete. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. Now the Bengals on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third down and 12. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. And now a high kick trying to pin him back. And they'll get to this and touch it. Looks like, yeah, right at the 15-yard line here. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Now Wilson eluding the pressure right. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. That's caught by Meredith right side. 
And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Now Wilson on first down. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. Again on second and ten, it's Wilson. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The Steelers on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This will be third and 15. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50 right at midfield. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. 19, 19. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. The tight end, Kelsey, has it over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 22 yards on the pick up there. And it's good enough for a Pittsburgh first down. Now it's Wilson. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Todd Davis in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. On second down, he's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Now it appears we have a Steeler here slow to get up. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down with... And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. John Simon in there with pressure yet again, and that's the seventh time they've dropped him here this afternoon. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. That's caught inside the 20. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. And they got 29 yards there. And that'll be good for a Pittsburgh first. Escaping the pressure right. And avoids the contact by sliding. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. A long drive here. Play 12 coming up for the offense. On second down, here's Wilson. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Chris Conley, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Steelers are able to cut into that deficit. 
I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah, yeah. yeah, you know. Doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And now, defensively, they're going to burn their first timeout. Remember, they get an extra time built in coming up here shortly at the two-minute warning. And they've got it. They recovered it. But hang on now while there's a penalty flag down. So they touched it before it went 10, and that's obviously not going to help their comeback bid here in the fourth. No, not at all. And they're trying to get something going, going after one there. But you've got to give yourself a chance. Let it go 10 before you touch it. Bell. Oh, what a juke into space. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. 38 yards on the scamper there. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Cousins now. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Only a yard on the completion. It's second and goal. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. Second and goal to go now. A give to Bell. He gets this down to the three. Brought the power run out of the bag, but couldn't do a ton with it. Call it a gain of two as they're knocking on the door now. Third and goal. They come up in an offset eye. They'll try and run for it with Bell. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So on fourth down, Marvin Lewis sends on the field goal unit. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Forbath will put this one through. And that will get the lead up to 14. So they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give them some breathing room and lets them build up a little cushion. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. a very short kick taken right at the 20 and a nifty return there as he's all the way up past the 40 yard line there's no downplaying that we all knew that this was a critical possession and to get a return like that to start things off that's the spark that they needed that's the spark they were looking for Wilson. He's going to let it fly. 
He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Complete the tight end, Kelsey. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As he'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On first down, Wilson. A swing pass caught. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Chris Conley with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Steelers have now made this a one-score game. Janikowski on for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. So with just over a minute to play, this becomes a make or break onside kick. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And this is going to be snuffed out. The Bengals recover. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. Now a handoff, running left is Bell. Got a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. So they get half of what they needed. It'll be third and six upcoming. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. It doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. On third down, here's Bell. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. But he was stopped on that play. But he's had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. The Bengals bring out their punter now. He's been terrific so far. And they won't try and pooch it. It's a fake. <laughs> and the gamble pays off. They get the first. Well, I know at points of this when you wanted to close your eyes <laughs> because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard, your defensive guy.